When I go back and I look at documentaries, we look at those and, and we look at them with a different kind of wonder, I think, than we look at fiction films. What we have in the, in the, with the Videomatica collection or with, say, the history of documentary is the history of kind of unintentional wonder. We see the most marvelous things and the real magic in many respects for me of cinema is in those moments of documentary that are not scripted, that could never have been constructed. The fact that, that many of these films are not available any longer, that many of them have not been digitized, that many of them are not available on Netflix, say, or on some other format, means that for our students, this is a wealth, this is a great wealth. In the early 80s, there was still an emphasis and always was in, in home video on the latest thing, but uh, some companies were catching on that they should release uh, their back catalog. Graham uh, was talking about doing something like opening up a video store. I said, why are, you, why are you thinking about doing that? And he said, well, because I can't find any of the movies I want to see. There was a niche because the product was available in the areas that we were both very much interested in terms of film in, and um, nobody else was doing it. Yeah, I complained to Brian that um, every video story had been in seemed to be run by a used car dealer who didn't know anything about movies and their taste was reflected in. There was something wrong that there was no stores for film buffs, so that's what motivated it. And we did have a common like, especially of classics and foreign films. So we thought, well, chances are if we like it, somebody else will too. But let's let's do it somewhere central like Kitsilano where people can get to us and uh, see if we can make a go of it. And that's kind of how it got started, you know. Just yeah, when I'd opened Videomatic, I'd never rented a video before. Which was kind of I interesting swear you didn't when have you a think TV. about it. I mean, it was just... No, no, I had a TV. Oh, you did? Okay. But I was always in the movie theater. Yeah. Yeah. Black and white, pro. <laughs> <laughs> when we started, I don't think we even had any documentaries. Then when the resurgence of documentaries came along, yeah, then we got into it big time because we're just following that trend. We've learned to fly the air like birds. We've learned to swim the seas like fish. And yet we haven't learned to walk the earth as brothers and sisters. Yeah, it was really encouraging to find out that uh, in Vancouver there was a real interest in uh, feature-length documentaries. It was huge. And uh, we had a huge wall of them and uh, really happy to see that go to SFU. This osterizer is doing something no blender ever did before. So what we'd like the public to know about the Videomatica collection is that it didn't just disappear off the face of the earth. Um, this great arrangement, so it, the documentary collection came to SFU. It's here to be used. You can come up and look at it in the library if you got a Borrowers card. And for alumni to know as well, because a lot of alumni forget that they've got library borrowing privileges once they graduate. The Videomatic collection can my guess is it could help almost anybody, in a sense, depending on what your angle is. Clearly, in the film studies and film production side of things, this is a really remarkable collection. Certainly students in communications will use this because they have documentary courses there. But I think anybody who wants to study cities, who wants to study architecture, who wants to study psychology, who wants to study almost any field of endeavor, can find something in documentary that's interesting, that can reveal the world to them. In order to achieve one's own happiness, you should take care. You should also serve other people. You see, creates more happiness on other people, then ultimately you get the, the benefit. What's very interesting about our relationship with SFU is that it, it's ongoing. The collection was bought up until it was taken over in the fall of 2011, and then it's kind of this collection that was preserved in aspic for about six months. We, in just conversations with, with different people from SFU, we expressed interest in continuing to help grow the collection from the time we'd stopped buying for it up until the current date and into the future. So it's an alive collection, it's not this historical only collection. Brian and Graham are continuing their relationship with SFU. How lucky is that, I think, and that they're going to be selecting documentaries for the collection. Uh, this is terrific, this is a great thing, and I, and I really welcome their continued support. And, uh, and that they believe in the collection and that they believe in our students, of course, and our uh, faculty so that they want to make the collection as good as they can. <laughs>